Hi everyone, this is Darren from Fast Track Property. I did this video a while back, but after reviewing it, I realized that it has still a lot of applications and very relevant in today's market. So here it goes for you to take a look, for you to plan your real estate cycle of property investment better in Singapore, right? And to really help me out, do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Hi everyone, this is Darren from Fast Track Property. Have you ever wondered which is more important? Purchasing a bright property at the correct price or financing the property of the property the correct way the next 10 to 30 years. Right? Today I'll explore uh, with you and go through with you two scenarios. First scenario, uh, owner bought it at a million dollars, could sell after 10 years at 1.1, but they fully funded this property using CPA for the entire 10 years. Versus the other party bought the property at 1 million, um, wrong property, sold only at 900 k Alright, but finance a property using cash for the next 10 years. Alright, at the end of 10 years, who is in a better position? Now, let's go. So, we have property owner A buying a property at 1 million. Okay. Took on a loan for 750 and a capital payment. Is 280. This actually includes the uh, stamp duty. All right. So the monthly payment for both of them will come out to 2772.15. All right. This will be at two percent for the next thirty years. Okay. So for owner A, what happens is that this amount that he used in CPF, right, it will have come up to. 358,000 in 10 years and the uh, monthly payment also using full CPF would then come up to 373,000 dollars okay at the time 10 years later the outstanding loan will be approximately 548,000 dollars so what I'm doing here is I'm just running off the figures up to the nearest thousand dollars alright so if you add all these three up you realize that for owner A, he will actually have, be having a negative sale of $179,000. Okay, so after 10 years, because after say, starting at $1.1 million, alright, you minus all these figures, he will have in his CPF after that of only $552,000. Okay, does this add up? Okay, let's just calculate yeah all right so here we are we just calculate these figures you sell at 1.1 million dollars right first you have to less off this outstanding loan at 45548 minus off the uh, cpf of 358 and minus off the other cpf which is 373 and this is what you will get right? negative 179 Okay, so this is for owner A. What about for owner B? So owner B, he bought a wrong property, could only sell this property for 900 k which is basically 100 k below what the initial purchase. So the same thing, he had to less off whatever he owed in the, the bank, will be the outstanding loan, which is the same amount of $548,000. Okay, and also return back to the CPF, uh, the same amount, which is over here, 358 and you realize that for this same buyer, he's also having a negative sale of six thousand dollars. Okay, let's we'll shoot to you nine hundred k minus five four eight minus three five eight three five eight. Right. So here he gives you negative six thousand dollars. But what he had working for him in the CPF every single month would have not increased up to. The same figure over here, right at uh, 373. In his CPF, we will have 373k. In his CPF, plus he managed to return uh, a total of 352,000 into his CPF, right? So because it's neg negative sale, so instead of 358 going into the into owner owner B CPF account, he only has 352 going inside instead of 358, right? So the total you would have here would be seven hundred and twenty-five thousand. All right. 
So you can see this is a vast difference. We're talking about a difference of $173,000 that owner B would have having in his CPF in the next 10 years versus owner A that right now if he sells it even at a profit of 1.1 million there's no profit because all goes back to CPF and at the end of the day he actually has $173,000 lesser than the person that purchased a property using uh, cash right so in conclusion which one makes more sense to you all right I know in Singapore context many of us are very prone to using our, our CPF to pay for our housing because why shouldn't be right? Because that's our money, 20% of our income goes into it, plus the employer side goes into it. Why shouldn't we use that money? But do bear in mind that the CPF gives you a consistent compounding interest of 2.5% and therefore, and therefore, if you do not have this money to give you the same returns that you could have made leaving your CPF, in the first year, it could be a struggle for you to put in the full cash into this uh, into, into your mortgage, but you could actually start to work towards it. All right, a few things, excuse me, a few things you can look into. Number one, if you first put in half of the amount, you say of two thousand two hundred going in, two thousand seven hundred going in, maybe you could put in thousand four, something you're comfortable with. All right, when you put it in, you know that you've already immediately made two point five percent because your CPM is then generating that amount for you. Or second, you will fast track this whole thing if you don't need to live in this two or three bedroom uh, condominium with so many bedrooms, you can easily just take one bedroom, rent it out, use the proceeds from that that you receive every single month and throw it back into the property, right? Because at the end of 10 years or 20 years, you'll be definitely be in a better position versus using all your CPM. Okay, and with that, I'll talk to you again.